So, you know what UV maps are, you know how seams work, you've trimmed all the fat off of your model, and you just need to know where to click and what keys to press. Not a problem. In the next four minutes, you will know exactly where to move that mouse in order to map your UV just the way you want. Alright, let's do this. Click UV editing, zoom in or out to center your object. In object mode, press A to select all, go to edit mode, and on the left side, click UV sync selection. Do not forget to do this, otherwise you're not going to be able to see what the hell you're doing. Then go over here, press U to bring up this menu, and check live unwrap. Awesome, the setup ritual is now complete. Go to the side of your object that still has its faces, select faces, press A, press U, project from view, Bam! Look at that! We are almost done. From this point, you can just control the map the exact same way you would control everything else. You can drag select points, edges, or faces, and once you've selected something, you can move them with G, rotate with R, or change size with S. You can also type in numbers for exact amounts. For example, if you want to rotate this part of the map 90 degrees, you can simply press R, type in 90, press Enter, bam! Rotation complete. For now, just move the whole thing up, go to the front view, Hold shift and left click all the most important faces. You don't have to select everything, just the things that you want to put the most detail on. Press U and project from view again and do this for the top, back, and bottom view. Some of you might have noticed that this method of texturing doesn't capture every face. For example, the inside of the handle doesn't show up on any of our map because it was always behind something. Now if that bothers you, you are welcome to go over here, move your mouse over the object you want to detail, and press L. This automatically selects all the faces related to that object. Press U, Smart UV Project, set Island Margin to 0.3, and the map for the whole object will be generated. It'll be big, but you can just press S to shrink it and move it into a corner. From this point, go to object mode, click on the object, go to edit mode, hold shift and left click all the edges that you want to put seams on. Right click and mark seams if you want to map things out manually. If you change your mind, you can always control Z or right click to clear seams. Now I'm not going to do that because I know that the character's hands are going to cover up the handle. And I also know that the average person is not going to notice the detail there even if I put it in. So for me, the map space that I would need to use for this face is just not worth the space that we would have to give up from the more important faces that I know the player is going to see. Once you've got the most important faces for each side on your object mapped out, the next step is to square everything out. Your map is going to be a square, so try and organize everything into a square. The first step of the process is to simply make sure that no two faces are overlapping. Once you've done that, start stacking everything up nice and even. Only you know what areas are most important for your map, so make those areas bigger than everything else. If at any point you decide that you want to connect two separate parts on the map, you can use the stitch tool. For example, if I smart project the magazine, it's going to show up like this. But if I want to connect the left side to the back side, all I have to do is go to edge mode, hold shift to select all the edges that I'd like to connect, press V, press enter, check it out. Just like magic, they are now connected. If you have an entire object separated like this, select the points that you would like to line up, Right click and align X to match them up perfectly. You can do the same thing with align Y for horizontal points. The result should be a perfect square, which will fit beautifully into the rest of our map. Once you've got your islands squared out, start putting them together in the squarest way you can. And with that being said, I just want to give a quick reminder that this method of texturing is designed to maximize detail and minimize wasted space. But the trade-off is it takes some time to set up. Just try your best to take up as much empty space as possible. Congratulations, you're done. You have now officially made a map that conforms to professional Japanese standards. You should be proud, this is a pretty tough style to do. If you want to be lazy though, I've got a super simple, super fast alternative method instead, which I will be sharing with you in the upcoming tutorials. For now, hope you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.